Well, hello everybody. Um, I got a little bit of a late start today. Had doctor's appointments and such. And today we're going to be translating this morning's conference. And because of my appointments, I have not had a chance to uh, see it in advance. So we'll find out together what the president said and did and uh, what happened today at the press conference. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start. I'm going to hit the go button here. Well, hello everybody. Good morning. Vamos a informar el día de hoy inicia la semana. We're going to inform today the week begins like always. It's over who's who. En los precios de los combustibles. In the prices of combustibles, gas, diesel, diesel, and gas, regular gas. This is very important. Lo repito, I repeat, because es lo que this is what stabilizes los the prices, que, que no haya that there not be um, lo que se conoce, uh, that there not be uh, something that's colloquially ser, known as mejor or better expressed as above all or better understood as that there not be um, overages or charging, overcharging because if the price, the gas, electricity everything depends very much the, um, the expenses in life so what, one of the problems in the neoliberal period was that they didn't care if, if they uh, constantly elevated the prices for combustibles, the famous gas hikes that they did. So then now, with this information, uh, the prices helps us a lot, helps the economy. Um, so also, to demonstrate briefly how um, how we started to work in the construction of the new airport in Santa Lucia. Now the Secretary of Defense, with his team of engineers, that are in charge uh, by uh, General Be uh, Vallejo has already initiated. And we're going to demonstrate how in 10 days we are going to advance. And it is also like this. It's not uh, to confront with a will to confront, but it's to gently, gently say, learn Take a, a look and then learn, or watch and learn. So take a look at this video. It's very brief. So we're watching a video now. Wow. That was a trick, he said. So you can see it twice. <laughs> because it doesn't have audio. You have to look at it again. Pretty tricky. If you want to wait, if you want us to wait so you can prepare, <coughs> and we'll ask Ricardo. How is it when you're going uh, to, it's like a premiere. Oh, like, uh, 
trailer. He says it's a trailer. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Muy Thank you, Mr. President. And hello to everyone. In the who's who in prices for combustible, for regular gasoline, we find it with the highest prices at 2188 in Baja California Emerald Gas with a margin of 326. This little jewel of uh, Baja California is not doing very well. In SGE in uh, Central Tabasco has the lowest price, while in combustibles in premium, the station BP in uh, Benito Juarez has a 22.78 per um, to the public, which has 3.90 margin, which is very high. They haven't had something that price in a while, but here this distributor decided to try against the grain. So there's another service called Cuernavaca uh, Super Servicio. It has a margin of uh, 42. He's got the lowest price. So it's good to see stations that are not from Tabasco and Veracruz that now Cuernavaca Morelos has a low price as well. So in Atatonilco, Jalisco um, has a margin of 3.6, is the most expensive in diesel, while the most economical is in Servicio Perimendez in Centro of Tabasco, 19.39 with a margin. Um, I missed the margin, sorry. So the most expensive were uh, those up there, Arco, Shell, and who was the first one? Chevron, Redco. Okay. So you can see the lowest ones are on the other end, and you can look at the um, the uh, chart that they have. So we attended to 288 claims that were presented by the consumers as a liter per liter, and 171 were verified and visited, and one of them that caused their attention that made a lot of problem in the uh, social web in Toluca, a gas station that was extending was for a few minutes, like nearly an hour. They were putting ga water in the gasoline. So the people, they think that that's how they can, they usually steal. No, when they steal, they use the, the uh, rakes. And we'll show you in a minute how that is when they do that. But that is done, be, that, that water, um, um, when they have lack of uh, maintenance, that's usually more of an accident, not usually because they're trying to steal. So then the vehicles break down. So they're going to have to pay the repairs uh, for more than 30 vehicles, and Profeco is going to have to pay for it. And they're going to have to pay for their fare. But that is not a way to steal. That's because they didn't invest in maintenance, and they should have. So these were the verifications. One ver did not allow to be verified, and we immobilized. Um, how many did he say? Uh, uh, oh, so they found 18 had irregularities. So if they don't, um, so then the, so they do special operations on people who refuse, and there was one refusal. Um, so this is the one that, uh, this is the first time they found one. They stopped all the stations because they had rakes. They were stealing 10% of the combustible in all their pumps. And to, as to a consequence, they closed that gas station and all their pumps were immobilized. 149,000 um, um, uses of the app. 
and it becomes part of the force of verification when the, con the consumers. So there's 110, 149 people that um, you know uh, downloaded the app. So, so there you could see the the highest and lowest prices. So they're repeating everything that they said a few minutes ago. So it would behoove you to check these lists if you're in Mexico to see where uh, it, the best price if you're in one of these areas. Um, and also who to stay away from because they, you can, they're trying to let you know uh, so that the public can not buy from them to help stop the, the increased prices because they're going against what the president said to do. See here, um, this is the uh, tank gases. So you can see that um, they, who's giving Jesus Vasquez has a very good uh, low price. So the cylinders, 20.74 was the highest price in Quintana Roo. And that's a nine peso margin, which is a lot. This guy in uh, Dolores, Guanajuato, they have 14.90, which is a very good price. So they appreciate the effort that they do to help the consumers especially for the people in Guanajuato. And so they expend um, LP gas. Oh, so four little angels did not allow themselves to be verified. There's three stations in Apodaco, uh, Nueva, uh, Nuevo León. So that the, so he's putting it on the, on the monitor so you can see who not to buy from. Nine out of 177, um, and you can see on the list the numbers. I'm sorry, I'm not going to translate all that whole list. So they're putting it at risk um, the consumer when when they're uh, putting their prices up, is what he said. So, no. so I think they've fixed it, so they're ready to do their video. So it's the advancement in the construction. Oh, now they have music. I can remove my camera too, you know. So you guys can see, oh, there it is. There we go. Wow, that is pretty cool, man. They're moving fast. They're doing a lot of work. Check that out. Man, our president is on the ball. He don't play. <laughs> Check that out. Wow. So now that's the parking area, he says. Wow. Awesome, right? Let me put myself back on. That's in 10 days. That's what they've done in 10 days. And I say firmly that, that, the, that the land is uh, firm, not boggy. So now we're going to open for questions and answers. So hello, Mr. President. Han Salazar from Cite Mejé. And I would like to ask you, first of all, what opinion do you have regarding the elections yesterday in Argentina? What is your perspective in that region? And do you consider that the, the, that there is a turn towards liberalism in, in that run of politics? And so the ones that are going against the model, do you consider that this run that they're having that is favorable for what's happening here in Mexico on behalf of your government? 
So what about the president-elect in Argentina? Do you feel like that? Do you, feel, do you have a different vision, or do you think that he's uh, you agree with their or regarding the leadership? So I respect the processes political processes, ele electoral, in every um, uh, land, country. So today I have thought of um, that I will call the president-elect in Argentina, Alberto Fernandez, and also the president, Evo Morales. I am going to make these two calls in order to congratulate them. I would do it also if it meant if someone else had won, other candidates that had won in the processes, uh, democratic processes. But I cannot up, give them more opinion, and I've already spoke. To, I've spoken that what each country, a sovereign, that they should assume as politics. In the case of Mexico, we received or decided not to continue with the neoliberal politics or porphyrism. That was the change. And we are taking into practice a new model that is different. This new model with a moral economy or of um, moral and well-being, I am defining it and clarifying it within a book that will be soon be put out on the 1st of December. I am told by the editorial uh, planet that the book will be ready or in books on the 1st of December. And there, I, I defined the, uh, the house because I recall when I was in the position, uh, our adversaries, the intellectuals, writers, analysts, they used to say benevolently, yes, yes, yes. Yes, we're in agreement with the diagnosis. But then hows? What about the hows? Those famous... Homos, which is house, because they used to think that there was no other way, that it was neoliberalism, or or nothing. They used to see the model as as, as infallible, like the most modern thing. Everything else that was produced was a backwards, a step backwards. And it would, it would not go with according to globality or global uh, world or with the new uh, proposal of uh, globalization. Uh, they thought that uh, globalization was the panacea, that the market would resolve it all, that why should the state, that is to say,
uh, only in a simulated way, because in reality um, they would um, utilize the fish when they needed uh, to be rescued or rescue uh, 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 financial institutions that were had uh, broken or lost their funds, and then they would put the expense on the people, and then they would say the market, yes, the market, it would take. Uh, they would take charge of the economic growth. That if it rained hard above, then it would drip, trickle down. So that the state, how could the state promote uh, the uh, development? They, because they, the, pro, uh, they, they didn't want to uh, share the wealth. They figured if they uh, got a lot up there, then some would trickle down. As if though, would, richness would be contagious. Like if it was permeable. So therefore, all those euphemisms were like a screen at the end of everything in order to loot and that's how they took it into effect in the case of Mexico the the heaviest case of looting in the whole history of our country it should be very clear that during the neoliberal period, period in 36 years, they looted Mexico like never before had it happened like this. Not even is it comparable with the looting that happened in the uh, three centuries that we were dom uh, den uh, under the uh, control of the colonials. So we decided not to continue with that politics. Besides that, what were the results? More poverty, less equality, more insecurity, more violence, and then of course, a whole lot more because that was the incentive of the neoliberal uh, um, government, a lot more corruption. So no, we set that aside. That is not for us, or in the case of Mexico. And that's why we're writing this book, and it'll be out on the first and we'll let you know on, on at that time. And I will call the presidents to congratulate them. And I was uh, monitoring it, and just like I was also uh, checking out that the Astros won, and that we were at three to two. And, and we're getting closer. So the prognosis that we made, that that they were going to be the champions of the World Series, but still there's a way to go in baseball. It hasn't ended until it ends. It's when uh, the first fall. So let, I have a question, Mr. President, regarding the same uh, matter in Argentina and Bolivia that you're touching on. Are you, dis are you willing to meet or have you contemplated meeting with the president-elect and the re-elect president in future uh, dates? But in order to, like with this logic of exchange, of politics and experiences in order to go against and to help change this model that has already been written. So, so the effecting that it has done to the people in these, few, these years. And above all, 
to open some um, economic uh, gateways to the region of South America, like with the matter of the U.S. And we even said in a punctual way the advancement. Are you also thinking about making these bridges to uh, make it equal the region of Cent South America and regarding did you bet? And, uh, did you make any bets with everyone? No, uh, regarding, no, the prognosis is pending since 20 days ago. And it's, I guess, on my, somewhere that he has on his um, documentation. And I predicted that that at the end it would be the Astros. No, Astro Cardinal. Oh, I thought it was Astros and Cardinals, and that's where I was wrong. But but Astros is good, but it's very important in this series. And there they go. They've won two games. And uh, they're in favor of Washington. In Washington. In Washington, the two that have won in Washington have been realized in Houston while in Houston, uh, while they were at home, they lost two. And so they're going to Washington and Washington lost in their own home three. So it's 3-2, and tomorrow it's the sixth one. And, and after, if Astros win, then it ends right there. But if they lost, lose, then it's a tie, and then Wednesday would be resolved. But that's, that's for those that would like, like baseball. We need to be thinking about sports. And the best thing is to do sport. That's the best of all, to, to uh, exercise, to walk, eat well, take care of our weight, and don't eat junk food. And that way it will help you not to have obesity. Because a lot of uh, illnesses have to do with that, and we can resolve it. And now that the time has changed, we have a possibility to wake up earlier, and we can do some exercise. <laughs> so, so here, uh, just look at this. It's been about 15 days that um, Cuba was with us. And the week before that, the president from Costa Rica came. And this week, we're going to have the president from Panama. And we are with, uh, we're very happy to be receiving the president. And we are going to be doing it uh, with the uh, prison uh, from other uh, countries, the prime ministers of other countries, in in to in order to encourage the uh, relations for uh, development and uh, friendship, and so it's probable that that we get a chance to meet with the president of Argentina and Ecuador and Bolivia, and also with the president of Ecuador. If he uh, solicits, and he'd done it before, but he canceled his, his trip to Mexico. And also, it had been done by, or what, it was being planned by the president um, from Chile, but also he canceled. But the doors are open for, of our country. Open door policy. <laughs> so, Mr. President uh, Jose Sobrevilla, there's a little unsettling regarding uh, Michoacan, regarding the matter 
a federalization of um, uh, the uh, teachers. We ask about um, this federalization. Well, um, the purpose is, is that it, we actualize everything that is related to with the payment to the teachers. Of course, there is a uh, colleaguing that is rigid or that uh, uh, sets the uh, payment. So, so the go federal government pays the, uh, the money to the federal teachers, and in general, the state pay the, the uh, payment for the uh, state ones. And also, with transferences of resources. And this is something that happened when it was centra centralized with inflation, kind of like what was done with this decentralization of the health services. So therefore, there's formulas. The federation turns over the funds to the state in order to pay the teachers. However, due to bad administration or due to the increase for the expenses, and so the number of uh, people going in into the uh, that are being um, going into the colleges. And so then they've got more than the, what they were expected. So then no what is transferred is not enough or the, the budget that they get. So for whatever reasons it may be. So poor administration or, or there's more expenses than what the budget was. So therefore, there was this custom that at the end of each year, you would give to the states, or the states would be given a compliment. And each state would negotiate their compliment according to according to how they got along with the Secretary of Hacienda. So then they would authorize it. And this also happened in the case of the universes. It happened with everything. There was a lot of discretionality when it came to these things. There were funds for cuts, or payoffs, special funds for municipal presidents. And that's why it's bothering them. To the extreme that the deputies uh, used to manage the budget. They would assign it. Like say they would get uh, 10 million, 10 or 15 or 20 to each deputy. And uh, with that money, they would, uh, they would negotiate. They would get those resources in exchange a cut for a cut, a pay, uh, like say a bribe. So that was in complicity with Hacienda. Because of course, that is an irregularity. The deputies have no reason to be uh, handling the budget. That's not their function. So all these things are no longer permitted. And it's difficult for them to understand it. So like, say, for example, now they are talking about uh, putting the law of uh, income. So now the deputies with that logic, they say we're going to increase the, the taxes. So we're going to increase the deficit. And so we're going to calculate higher the price of petroleum. 
And that way, we'll have um, uh, supposedly more money. And then we'll make a, um, 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 a like a purse and we'll, we'll, we'll split it amongst the organization, like the social uh, organizations, the state governments, the municipal governments, the universities, and all of them. All of them would get some. But what does that mean? More debt. Increase in taxes. That now all of a sudden the budget is not enough. So they decide to increase the price of gases. So all these things are ended. They've been put to an end. So now, that is what we have is conformity. They have to. They can only take what goes is supposed to go to them. And the municipalities have to take what they get and what is supposed to go to the executive. But now they're reviewing in order to federalize the services. And in the case of education, in order to pay the teachers, like you pay the federal teachers, they will pay the state ones. So we'll take charge of it. However, first we are going to review the nomina, which I'm trying to figure out what nomina is. I guess it's like what what they assign for the budget. So we're going to make a census school by school. And we are going to let you know how much is that is needed. And from the tr federal treasury, like it occurs in the case of the uh, federal teachers, they will pay everyone the same way. So we're going to take charge of that. And even so, as, as it is needed, a greater resource, but we want to have the assurance that it's being well managed, this budget. I am not blaming anyone, but in the case of health, the so-called popular uh, health was actually like like their little cash box for some of the state government. So they used to use the funds for other things, other ends. And so all of that is what we're realizing. Fortunately, there's uh, some understanding with the governors, but in the government that is applying the practice is uh, the state of Michoacán in the case of uh, education. And as of whatever comes out in Michoacán, then we'll start to the federalization throughout the whole country. And that, if that's how it's accepted by the state government, that is, if, if they're in agreement. It is voluntary. It is not obligatory. And they come to that agreement if they, if they decide that the nomina be uh, federalized. So this, so this next question, Mr. President, when will the Mexican people know the politics for the fourth transformation in uh, public media? Well, now, not only do you know them, but every day you find the Mexican people find out like never before 
as before, as never happened before. We guarantee the right to, uh, right to information, nothing's hidden, and that's how we're going to continue doing it. And of course, it's going to be uh, uh, contracts for publicity has already been made um, and it's not even worth talking about liberty it's sacred and we are not going to that anybody be um, asking for anyone to be uh, or some columnist. We're not going to ask for anybody to be fired because they would critique us. Like if that that would feel bad because we're used to the critique from uh, for a long time. It would be immoral too for us to to um, to be messing with the media. And so changes are happening. Then I, I, I feel it's lamentable, and I was paying attention, and I was worried, and also concerned about an uh, a accident that happened with the media partners that were accompanying us on the route. And there was an accident that happened with a, um, a truck and they got their attention but it was not great and they're already recovering and yesterday I was uh, commenting Let's look for the, we need to try and uh, look for the ways to prevent risks that are not necessary or that if they don't necessarily need to go to cover all the way from here, there's media that have uh, uh, people that go. It's better to send people that have people in that area cover that and look for a mechanism of other types as well. So the certain thing is that all public acts be transmitted and uh, be done live. All, all of them. And due to the practice, I, I have not uh, spoken on, except w when it comes to public acts. I go to a, to a state, and, and they want to interview me. And I am cautious to wait till the very end so that you go with us and they're taking out their um, stuff and they don't get there. But like they say, they don't get the note. The truth is that I don't speak uh, just to say, I'm just glad to be here. The way I feel happy every day when I go to a state and then we go to the act. And there it is transmitted. If there was some special thing that was grave, then, yes. However, in general, I do it via face, Facebook or Twitter. Usually, I do it this way. So therefore, we keep, need to keep an eye and look on this because they used to say for me to short the the number of visits. He says, but I don't have enough time. The country is too big. 
and I have to go and visit the whole country. And I can't just be sitting here, on, but on the weekends I, I travel through the whole country. And then when I do the whole run in the indigenous regions, which is very important to the indigenous people, they've been forgotten and margined because also they need were like disappeared during the whole uh, neoliberal period. Before the neoliberal period, like around the years 80, they had um, a life. The uh, coordinators of uh, indigenous, uh, so most of them were founded in the years uh, 1970s. And in the uh, 1970 years, they participated in the foundation of anthropology. Margarita Nolasco, Salomón Nagmat. Well, Fernando Benítez. There was a special attention. And during the neoliberal period, they disappeared, these politics, for the attention for the indigenous people. So it's very important to return and to see them and see the Yaquis, like we did this weekend, and the Mayos, and the Guarejillos, so the Seris. So therefore, that is the tour that I'm making now. And when it ends, this tour, I will go to the revision of works. So we're going to be in Santa Lucia, and we'll be there again. And we're going to be in Dos Bocas, in the platform, in the petroleum camps, and we're, and we're going to be at the Train Maya, and we're going to go to the Istmo, and we're going to go where they're making roads, and like that, constantly. And that is why we got to get an agreement, and I'll ask Jesus to make some kind of a plan as to how to maintain the communication without risks and making sure you're taken care of and looking for that there not be accidents. Thank you, Mr. President. Alejandro uh, from Digital. What's going to be the thing regarding the um, the money that or support is given to the um, the media that goes with you? So, is there some kind of funds and the complements of the uh, right to information? to facilitate uh, the government uh, to facilitate that uh, compliance with that mandate, like to go with these type of uh, tours. Because like this, um, this could have been presided uh, or uh, predecessors of the, there was in December when they were going to Gambache, so they went through the jungle, and there was another incident in uh, Oaxaca. There was a crash with Sinaloa. They ran out of gas on a road that was very in insecure. And Chihuahua, there was some lost in the zone of the uh, hills in Nayarit, somewhere left. Um, and w with all these risks, that the, the municipalities pay for those kind of vehicles. Is there a co-responsibility by the president of the um, republic 
because they informed them in the logistics when we picked up the trucks that they weren't in good, very good um, uh, shape. And then Saturday they had another one breakdown. And then the one that the one that crashed, the tires were all, um, they had no uh, tread. So we spoke to Jesus Ramirez in order to propose to them that maybe we could pay the media the, the renting of the vehicles and maybe rent some vehicles that were in better uh, state and maybe somebody that was better capacitated and they had no response that was favorable. So, so they want that the um, that, that it's very difficult for them to to keep up with him and his team goes to about a, at about 120 and they can only travel at 110 so it's hard for them to keep up and then sometimes difficult zones for them to travel when we went to three uh, municipalities where they steal gas and we were in a vehicle that was military that uh, in, all that implies and we had that vehicle from that we had the uh, military protecting us from behind and ahead. So how are we going to get the security for the media personnel? Because it's an ir irony to cover the the president has now become a risk for the media workers. Yes, I think we need to get uh, come in agreement with uh, Gonzalez. Because it's not like it was before, because they had a special attention. They used to spend lots of money on that. And we, what we try to do is to save in everything. And I can tell you and comment to you that um, when we were in the with the opposition, nobody uh, covered us. For years, the media covered didn't cover them, and they didn't make it pay any attention. Uh, and there was no uh, media with us. But I have to recognize that during a lot of time, it would only cover us. Uh, for the, the exodus for the uh, democracy, uh, or they covered the whole thing. And then they stole the presidency from us, and then we started to go through the whole country. One periodical, one, one uh, media person. Eliodoro Cárdenas? He didn't get to see all the municipalities. <coughs> but I do believe he does know about 85% of the municipalities of Mexico. He's the only one. And he had an accident. Because we had two trucks, one in the front and one in the back, and in the back one that was following. It was not uh, newspaper people, but just people that were following or working with us. And he was in there. And I so he took it from Costa Rica to here, from Huachinango, the town. Fortunately, nothing bad really happened. <coughs> but now, it's different. In the campaign, they did cover and they supported with the travels during the campaign. 
So we're going to try to resolve it now. But we're trying to. Sometimes it even bothers me when I see the caravans. Because I did my campaign with just two trucks. And there was four of us. Only that. But now, it bothers me that there's so many vehicles. Because why so much expense? It's different from the press. I'm talking about the committee to let you know so that <laughs> I'm saying it to the door so the window can hear. Uh, I don't like it. So if the municipal presidents go, they have this big old truck. And then they have helpers. Why don't they just get, why don't they get an agreement and all go in one vehicle? Beca or that the ones that have to go, we can go. So we can take the expense. It's not the case for the periodicals or media. But let's look for a way to get an agreement. But just, I need to let you know that I have all the confidence in Jesus Ramirez. Because sometimes there's grilla, like politicking. So therefore, Jesus, he's a man with principles and ideals, an honest person that struggles. I, wor I rest very much with him. He supports me very much. Jesus is Jesus is my right arm and I have all the confidence so therefore he also used to be a newspaper person he was the director of the uh, periodical regeneration that had about 15 million examples uh, and he was a, a newspaper man in the media. And Jesus Cantu also. So it's a matter of getting uh, in agreement and uh, meet and um, define what you're going to do. And also to guarantee um, to security. And also, I am cautious with that, and we are all, all are cautious of that. Cautious of that. Sometimes when we travel, we have to go at a certain speed, but not so fast. Like I'm reading or I'm looking at something, then sometimes I wasn't paying attention so that they can slow down. But we try to calculate the time well so that we arrive on time. But we cannot be uh, uh, doing these tours to be an uh, act on one day when there's so many pending things. So, so there's so many municipalities. So I have to take advantage. If we already went to Sonora, we might as well go to Alamos. And then we'll end in Bahia de Quino, and we'll see the Yaquis, the Mayos, and we can take advantage. In the case of Sonora, we then find ourselves with the indigenous groups of the state. And we still needed to go to Caborca, but they came down some representatives from the north of Sonora. So there we go, and we need to maintain this tour in order to get the sentiments of the people, and that's my job, and that's what I have to continue doing.
Some other questions. Last week, there was a reform regarding, among other things, the uh, federal district could be the uh, <coughs> what the um, uh, fiscal the fiscal mm. oh so it's taxes so it's taxes so the, the one who took care of the taxes, um, tax man, I guess. So what do you think is going on in Mexico with the reform with the Constitution? It's the same one that approved the new Constitution. So from when they were to opposition, they changed their completely their uh, position. What do you think that they approved? Something about the taxes. Um, so the chief of government needs to uh, deal with that. I can also say in that case that I think it's disproportionate, this comparison, with all respect. Because what we tried to do, or it was done, during the six-year term uh, past, it was more complicated when it's relation related to the procurement. I don't know if it's the same case, but, but we have to look at it. <laughs> of course, that's different cases. <coughs> We're not the same. Because <coughs> that does make him angry. <coughs> I'm not so involved. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm having a cough attack here. But it has to do with the governor of the, of the state. And I know of Ernestina Godoy, and both of them are women that are first rate, integral, fighters, honest. Ernestina has a trajectory with the opposition with the government that it stands out. Did you know that when I took over the government in, I mean, <coughs> when I entered the government in 2000 when I entered, I wanted a, Ernestina is the a counselor for the jury, and I looked for her to let her know, because she used to come from the movement of democratic attorneys, and she told me, yes, but I have one problem. I haven't gotten my uh, title. I'm still out pending. And that is why <coughs> it produces, uh, I introduced one from another girl, then we had this girl from Estela Rios, which was, was a counselor during my government, but I'm talking about 20 years ago. And she was about to, um, and she got her title. And she's worked as a federal uh, deputy, and she's always, always been fighting for justice, for democracy, and she's an honest woman, without a doubt, same man, Claudia Sherman. 
And if they ask, how is she? The oh. uh, he says it's very well said. <coughs> because they're partners. Yeah, she's um, my fiscal um, uh, brother because we're we're friends from the same. We've worked many years and fought many years together. And for me, it's a prideful thing to have Claudia Chayman as the chief of government. <coughs> it's a, a matter for uh, pride and the same with Ernestina Godoy but let's see about that uh, legal reform I don't know if it's because of that that Ernestina Godoy that's going to have to be resolved by uh, Claudia and I don't know if she's already been named legally, and I don't have that, the elements on that. But I do know the two ladies, and I can tell you regarding Ernestina that it's real. It's been 20 years. <clears throat> and in 20 years, it's the same Ernestina as always. <clears throat> she did not get rich. She's not corrupt. How would I not have confidence in her? <clears throat> Very good day to all of you and people from Mexicali. Channel uh, 66. After the uh, fires in Tijuana, Rosarito and Ensenada, where they lost three lives and more than five, uh, more than 1,400 hectares were damaged, <coughs> there was only uh, 26 elements from Conafod. We know that they're supposed to support. Um, <coughs> but we also know that there was some kind of a cutback, about uh, several million pesos. But that's not all that's going on in Baja California. There was some reports with this uh, uncertainty with the support. <coughs> it's still difficult uh, to get the teachers paid, and they haven't paid in Baja California, they haven't paid uh, the teachers. And they also said that the federal government will be absorbing the support for the resources for the immigrants. And more than 50,000 and more than 15,000 that are waiting for a political assignment with the U.S. <clears throat> so they don't know where the support is for them. So, Mr. President, the Baja California people don't believe the discourse of the governor. And it's very far with the... Uh, we don't perceive the federal government is helping. We can't wait for Francisco Vea to leave uh, so that we can start getting help. What do you answer to the Californians that are having these needs? That we are supporting. Oh my gosh, I didn't realize this went away. <laughs> I'm sorry, he says, I have other data. Oh my gosh, I was listening. Where is it? <laughs> so during the fires <laughs> that were still maintained at 10%, <clears throat> And they were already uh, put off about 90%. And in Senada, and in, that's where it was affected the most. And in fact, they did lose um, three lives. Two due to burns, and one to asphyxiation. I have all that information. And I was pending to the whole, uh, paying attention to that whole operation independent of the elements of the commission 
<coughs> for the for the forest um, conservation the uh, military worked and it took off the, uh, the marines arrived national guard were uh, sent and they acted they acted well they did not um, let it let the problem go uh, regarding the fire I have the evidence of what I'm telling you and that is why it was reduced quickly this fire and they turned it off the fires and that is the information that I have so even the governor understood it and recognized it and I also have a way to prove that because it is our responsibility to comply so related to the teachers we're attending it's a matter that is similar to the one that I exposed regarding the uh, lack of resources that they're not having enough uh, the government from the state but, but the federal government doesn't owe them anything <laughs> that is to say we are uh, current we've paid them what we they we've already transferred the funds that they were supposed to go get according to the law and if they don't have enough it's because of what I mentioned so therefore we're attending to that uh, matter as well and it's been 15 days and I was in San Quintin and I went to let them know that we're going to amplify the hospital in San Quintin and also I didn't receive complaints that the elder adults were not getting or ob obtaining their funds or their pension I have the information that all of them are getting it the majority of them there's a few uh, that, that uh, there's been a diminishment in the in the uh, number of immigrants there's a reduction in four to five months of that migrants and you will soon be informed from by the Secretary of uh, Foreign Relations, the team what used to happen in June when it took off with this crisis to the state it's totally different and now we can say that the situation normalized the migration situation I'm referring to the transiting or coming into the uh, country it's different completely I have different information different data and the information I have also that they came to an agreement uh, in order to deal with the waters in Tijuana that they've come to an agreement between the two countries that they're going to put treatment plants for water. Yes, that's an investment that was authorized for 200 million and I'm taking the advantage to tell you the government the U.S. government is going to put half, and we're putting the other half. <coughs> and it is, the program is functioning for the stimulus for the uh, uh, border states or cities, the, the decrease of the taxes and the taxes on the rent, and they've uh, doubled the salary. So, 
in, we're attending it all. The, the whole um, borderline and the whole country. And the ne last thing, well, yesterday, I like baseball. And the Aguilas had the longest um, thing um, in Los Mochis. And I want to know if you're going to be going to the protest. No, I'm not going to assist the acts of take um, the positions of the governors because that belongs to the attorney Olga Sanchez Cordero, the secretary of governing, and she is being represented. These uh, civic ceremonies Yo les mando siempre mi felicitación a los que eh, and I'm, entran I'm, y también mi saludo y respeto <coughs> and I'm saying a hello to my salutations and respect to the ones that are coming and, the, and then also to the ones that are leaving and to uh, appreciate what they did even when there was um, problems because that's the way these things go. It's not a little simple um, golden uh, coin, this um, uh, noble office of um, working in politics. So Olga Sanchez Cordero is going to deal with it. <coughs> so, President, um, regarding Xbook and the functions of uh, UNAM, where um, the government, and they have to take care of their personal, uh, so the government, how is it doing it? How are they going to do this labor of taking care of your personnel and the companies, like the people that had this accident? <coughs> we all need to take care of each other. And I've said it before, and I repeat it, it's very important to eat well, to take care of your uh, uh, food, because make sure not to eat too much, it's to eat better. <coughs> and to have a, a, a diet that's uh, eat, um, well balanced with protein, de with carbohydrates, de vitaminas, with vitamins. Those are the three components. Y comer lo más que se pueda. And eat the most natural things that you can. De <coughs> a and to return <coughs> to the diet de antes, of before. Casos, In lots of cases, the bean, the corn, the grain. So corn and, and um, beans is like the best thing. <coughs> they used to think that that tortillas, that, that they were bad for health that you shouldn't eat too many tortillas. But tortillas are actually very healthy and beans are very healthy. And to take care of your health and, and nutrition and to do um, exercise as much as you can, to walk, to walk and walk and walk, that helps a lot. And besides that, it takes away stress. When I can, I go practice to the fields, to baseball, to practice baseball. Imagine with a bat and I see that little ball and I hit it really hard and then I get it out of my system. <clears throat> and there I get rid of my stress. And then I get into other things. And I don't get worried, anxious. I stay serene or stay serene. 
Stay tranquil. Don't excite yourselves. Go slow. And of course, having your conscience clear, that helps a lot. The stress comes also from from behaving badly. How wouldn't you be stressed out? Someone who's stealing. Especially during this phase. Because it could fall. And then they'd go in jail. <coughs> so let's, let's look at that. And understand that happiness, as I've always said, is not to accumulate a, a financial wealth. And it's to be good with ourselves, with our conscience, with our neighbors. A style of life that's different. To set aside or not have it be the end or this last thing. To accumulate riches or luxury. That helps a lot. If you act with humility, <coughs> then your conscience will be tranquil. And if you have for the basic necessities, what's necessary, if you're not constantly thinking like someone who's ambitious, that all they think about is money. That's all that's important to them. They can't sleep. They can't rest. And that's not healthy. To you. There's countries where the ones that bet on the uh, interest rates or and then if the interest uh, rate drops, <coughs> Then the ones who were um, investing or betting, they have heart attacks, infarcts. Yes, they commit suicide. Imagine that. So therefore, we've got to stay calm, tranquil. So a second question, if you permit me. On occasions, you've made a call out that the empresario or the um, businesses should act in an ethical way. The so, there's so what about the relations with uh, companies and governments in Latin America. In the case of Mexico, I think that the major responsibility is with the government. Like, let me give you an uh, example. Regarding the problem that they used to have, that the government used to give a bad example. And then they had no moral authority. So then they couldn't ask them to act correctly. <laughs> if the public uh, um, uh, workers got involved in businesses, then then it was permitted for everyone to do it. And so public workers should only be interested in public works or businesses. And that's not what was happening. If there's correctness in the government, and then you'll have moral authority in order to ask for everyone to pr uh, act correctly and perceiving everyone. And so now businessmen are understanding it. 
And all of them. Everyone's understanding. <clears throat> Those that have dealings with or relations with the government, providers, contractors, and I've said it before, contractors. If they, if, if they, any contractor takes the, the money um, that, that was given, <laughs> if someone takes the funds that were given in advance, uh, they'll, they will be, they will, uh, the people will be informed. And how will, what will he say to his family and his children? Because before they used to applaud it. Oh, he's so smart. How smart he is. He already took advantage. He tricked him. He, he, he won the government. He won the tax man. He beat the tax man. That is no longer permitted. Works that were not finished. And, and uh, jobs that were given to people who had no, no um, experience in, in construction. And so they had friends. Uh, and they would get the jobs. And politicians selling medications, what do they know about that? If that ends, <coughs> then we'll, we'll advance a lot in Mexico. And in every case, they will, they will get their own definitions. But what I can say is that corruption destroys. It's a cancer. And we need to unearth it. Of that, there is no doubt. And, and it's difficult. It's hard. But it can be done. And it, it can, in the case of Mexico, for many reasons. First of all, because there exists a, a will, a political will, to not permit corruption. And we are decided to end corruption. I wish that you could remember like that the government. That it was the government that was in charge of ending corruption in history because there's few periods where that were like this in the story history of Mexico very little I can tell you a little something ahead regarding the Isa. you know how I started my book I counted. Uh, I accounted that during the conquest of Cortes, it's self-named, without any uh, uh, legal foundation. They named him a mayor, the authority in Veracruz, and chief of the invading uh, military. And when he, uh, when they uh, spread things out, the treasure from Montezuma, <coughs> it was during the days of the 10th of um, Castilla. He was a great historian of, of, uh, conquer, of the conquer. And when they sp um, sp spread out the money, or they they had already um, already taken all the treasure, the one they had already taken, 
they had already taken the majority Cortés of it, Cortés and his captains. Y lo que le toca a los and what the soldiers got ya es muy poco. was very little. En la colonia, in the, in the uh, colonial, mismo, la same thing with corruption. Y and I can give you, and I do give a few data. The independent media, imagine, Santana, imagine that, 11 times president of Mexico. So when did the honesty go in during the reform? The, within the uh, restored republic uh, during Juarez and Lerdo uh, reign because the liberals of the reform they used to wear the uniforms they used to sew themselves and they used to give good accountability correct accounting not lying truthful and then Porfiria so comes in. Again, corruption comes in. Way high. And the uh, businesses, they started giving concessions for petroleum. They gave businesses to the uh, railways with the lands. The revolution could not handle it. And they continued with corruption. It continued. Rem remember what Obregón used to say? That uh, they took off his arm during the Battle of Celaya with the confrontation of Villas, Pancho Villa. So someone said to him, a friend who knew him very well, he brought out a, a one piece of a coin or, uh, called Azteca. And he, and he says that the arm came and they came and got the money. And that's how he recovered his arm. And then, of course, you know what happened during the six years. Some more, some less. Pero nada, 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 but nothing, nada, nothing, nada, nothing, nothing, as I said at the, during the beginning of this, this conference, I said it, that nothing compares with the looting that took off during the neoliberal period. No there is no president. Entonces, so then, imagine how important it is for Mexico, for all Mexicans, that we would be able to say with the fourth transformation meant to end corruption. And then, then I'll leave happily to Palenque. That's where his home is. And that is the purpose, and we are going to gain it. We're going to do it. And this will permit the rebirth of Mexico. Because if there's no corruption, there's enough budget. The budget will be sufficient. There is no need to raise taxes or create new taxes or in debt the con put the country in debt. What is was most damaging during the uh, Mexican Revolution was dishonesty of the government, of the governors. And during this last period, it was the nefarious Imagine presidents that privatized, that sold 
goods that belonged to the nation. And then they went to work with the companies that to, had the benefit of the privatizations. But presidents and secretaries of the treasury and directors of, of uh, directors of the federal electrical uh, company, they mix together everything, the, the uh, political power with the economical power. That is that is what will not be permitted. And that is what's going to give us the opportunity of taking into effect this change. So hello, Mr. President. From Reforma, I want to ask you about an uh, investigation regarding the intelligence agency, some electrical magistrate, José Luis Vargas, because recently there was a suspicious um, increase in his uh, 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 like how uh, how much money he made or what he owns uh, compared to what he earns and his account. And, uh, and during a crucial year, during the when they weren't supposed to, you know, um, have their funds. <clears throat> if the uh, intelligence uh, agency of uh, finances has the information, of course, it'll run its co uh, course and it'll get to the uh, attorney uh, general. The attorney, uh, is it, the, what is it, the uh, attorney of the republic. I haven't had a chance to have the audience. Uh, Santiago Nieto, because he asked me if he wanted to, um, I might see him this week, but every time I, we talk, and it has to do with, um, I don't have any information regarding this in particular. Perhaps it has elements of um, that the, uh, it needs to be uh, dealt with with the uh, legal authorities and they need to um, see where the funds came from. And so here it applies as to who, where the funds came from. There's things you can't hide. And one of them is money. You can't hide it. You, you can't hide it. So, no matter how many fiscal paradises you have, it is very difficult to hide. So, in Fantoche, Fantoche. So the corrupt people, um, what do they do? It's their style. Puppet, Fantoche, to, to buy uh, residences in el and uh, apartments in, in uh, foreign places. Depositar or they deposit money in, bancos in uh, foreign banks in fondos del in, and funds in the uh, foreign places. But now, due to the agreement within the nations and the government to combat uh, uh, money laundering, there's a lot of information, and it is very difficult for someone, uh, for it not to be known. So therefore, if there's those type of movements of um, accounts, then you have to investigate it. So what magistrate is Jose Luis Vargas Valles? Uh -huh. So I didn't know about that. But not to talk about him now. Yes, 
that doesn't mean that if we talk about it here, that means that he's uh, actually um, guilty. It has to be demonstrated. We cannot um, utilize a summary judgment in order to discredit someone that if they don't, if they didn't commit illicit acts. So we have to see what it's dealing with. You know something? What is a good referen a referral is the amount. Like if it's something like millions, then there's no way, there's no doubt. Because no matter how much he earns, there's no way he could save that much. What is the amount? His patrimony increased four times its, uh, its what it used to be. So, yeah, we have to look at it. So, in other words, his resources, his reserves are very, uh, four times what they um, were. So, what about reviewing... So it looks like it has to do with the judges that deal with um, penal situations. So this is so this is the first time they've had an electoral judge. Um, that of course there is. There must be also in the electoral because there's been some. And they've resolved some things that that are very controversial. We've suffered that. And it could be due to phobias or due to uh, uh, party, ideological, political differences. But if it's not for that... But if it doesn't sound uh, logical, it sounds metallic. If it's not for that, it's because of money. But that's ended. And we are not going to tolerate corruption. And in this case, and in others, we're going to investigate. And we don't permit it. And it's a good thing for all of us to be monitoring corruption. Another question regarding this uh, magistrate. Um, uh, that he batted something uh, about somebody else had some illegal uh, financing. Yes. Let's investigate it. Let's see who you're talking about. And the last question, yesterday they ended with <coughs> district assemblies, <coughs> which was the process of the um, um, Morena Party's internal thing. And we detected some irre irregularities that they got some names that Morena leaders that were going to be used as uh, counselors. And this irregularity was, was at, repeated in many assemblies. That and other many other things. What do you? What's your opinion on this? I don't get involved in these things, but only to say that that they make a mistake if they're thinking that that the people is susceptible to manipulation. The people is not stupid. It's the 
the people that believe that the people are stupid are sí, stupid. So if one thing we've advanced in in these last times is in the change of conscience of our people. But what if they manipulated uh, yesterday, these morenistas? They could do that. And accept, well, let's accept without conceding because I don't have the data to judge. And besides, I shouldn't even get, be getting involved in those things. But it is important to reflect on these funds or on the basis. There is no more imaginary citizens. There's no more uh, uh, sheep. So where are you going? <laughs> did he make some meh? Where are you going? Who did you vote? <laughs> so people were just voting for whoever. It's not like that anymore. Give yourself a hand. Yay! Due to becoming politicized in our country. That's the most important thing. It's what we've advanced in the most. If it wasn't like that, we would be on the floor. Because the conservatives have not resigned themselves. They resist. They will not accept the changes. They continue to attack one yes and then the other one too. And the people are supporting us. And that is why we maintain ourselves. This is a new reality. Things are changes, important changes, and the mentality of the people, which is the most important thing to gain. The difficult, most difficult thing as well. I always say that sometimes when there's a revolution, the people continue to think the same. And now, a, if there's a, a confrontation that was armed without violence, there's a change in mentality. And when mentality changes, everything changes. So therefore, you can continue with those practices. Uh, Anti-democratic. I don't know what that is. But we cannot underappreciate this citizen. No one. The citizen in general, and in particular, in this case, a militant a citizen from a, from a party, because they suppose that they have a trajectory uh, so, so then what's going to happen? We lived this. Didn't they bring people to vote for candidates that were different? In the past election? And what did the people do? Once they were there? They voted for liberty. So therefore, it's the same thing. There has to be a vote in order to uh, elect the directors, these party uh, directors, and this also for the directors of the syndicates that's free, that's secret, that's direct. And I think that no one wants to be manip manipulated anymore, or no one will permit to be manipulated. So therefore, to have confidence in that, and they'll make a mistake, some of them. But you get surprised, because you know it's going to happen, that they 
um, put the people down and they consider them manipulatable but not not like that anymore this is another thing so therefore that's the opinion that all those attempts in the case of if it were if it were true what you're saying they're not gonna prosper because as I understand it there's going to be an election and they have to elect so let's see there's going to be a part um, uh, 2,000 1,000 3,000 and they're going to vote and what can I say not only to the militants from Morena but all of them all the citizens don't let them manipulate you act as good citizens like democrats the one that allows himself to be manipulated the, the one who acts in function of interests of groups sectarian groups he is not a good citizen he's not a democrat and in order for it to be clear, he is not acting within the, the, the framework that's defined of principles of the fourth transformation. Even if he says so, because there was that falsity to say I'm from the left, but from the corrupt one is not from the left. The one who makes does tricks is not on the, from the left. The one that doesn't care about the people, he's not a leftist. He might be a conservative, perhaps, but certainly not from the left. Thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll see each other. Thank you. So it ended there, you guys. Um, I, I am, I'm always impressed uh, with our president, and um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you stick around till the end, uh, just so you know, um, I don't know if any of you are watching it on. Uh, English Amlovision, but because I had so many people that um, want uh, Spanish uh, uh, material, I'm going to have to leave Amlovision as the Spanish channel, and then we're going to make English Amlovision for the English uh, speaking public. Um, so this one will be put on English Amlovision, and in the, um, I'm going to put uh, the link on the uh, description so that you guys can uh, uh, join my English Amlovision uh, channel because um, right now until people <laughs> move over I'm, an, I'm gonna keep doing it on Amlovision regular for a while just so that you guys have time to transition and find it um, but please pay attention and uh, move over to English Amlovision if you want to see the programs in uh, English because I do like to do programs in Spanish with uh, some of my friends in uh, Mexico and other lands, uh, Spain, uh, Peru, um, and, and, I, and uh, they speak uh, Spanish. So what I could do is I could put it on the Spanish channel and then sometimes I'll translate it to English so you'll be able to see it in English later. But I need to do this in order to uh, have a little more coordination because the people that speak English don't want to find, think they're going to see a uh, video and it comes, turns out to be Spanish and then they can't understand it and vice versa the same way. The people that speak Spanish, you know, want to be able to see the, the videos in Spanish. So I just have to, you know, try and reorganize it and I'm sorry uh, if this is inconvenient for you. But until I get this all sorted out, I hope you guys will bear with me because I'm really trying to do the best I can. Um, I've had some health problems, so I haven't been able to do 
um, the visits every day uh, with the uh, conferences. But I, I am going to be trying to go backwards uh, to some of the days because, you know, sometimes the president says so many good things that I just can't pick, you know. I can't pick what to do a little, um, you know, a short video on. But I, I am trying to, um, I've decided to do the full conference first and then maybe take some notes and then later do a, uh, like a little short one on each of the important topics um, that, you know, maybe people might be more interested in hearing just that part. Um, the um, gas prices is always uh, interesting uh, and, and difficult to translate because there's a lot of charts, a lot of numbers. And I think, you know, if you just l read the charts, um, you and, and they're pretty easy to translate, um, even visually, uh, that you'll be able to figure out what the gas prices are. But sometimes, you know, I, I have to cut that out because there's, the conferences are so long already. And by the way, I don't want to make it any longer for you, but uh, please uh, like, subscribe, and uh, leave me a comment and I'll answer you. And tune in uh, to the Twitch channel. I also have a Twitch channel and I'll leave the link in the, in the description as well because my um, YouTube channel sometimes has difficulty going live, but my Twitch channel always goes live. So you'll see it first on the Twitch channel if you're willing to, to do go to that channel. Get yourself a um, subscription, and they're very simple. You may already have a Facebook, or if you have another account, a YouTube or Google account, all you have to do is sign in, and it'll link it with your other accounts. So it'll make it very simple. Anyway, enjoy, have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.